Greetings. Welcome once again to the Film School. I'm Joe. And I'm Chris. And tonight, keeping in the tradition of our Criterion episode, we're going to do a review of another boutique company called Arrow Films, which is a distribution company based in the UK. And they're a lot like the Criterion, although I would say that their film selection is maybe not quite to the level of the Criterion. Oh, no, there's a lot of lot of lot of B movies for sure. A lot of cult movies for sure. Yes. And uh, uh, cult, cult's a better word. I'm yeah. Sorry. Well, no, there. I mean, come on. Contagion is a B movie and a cult movie. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's an alien ripoff, but it is. A, it's definitely a cult movie. Definitely. <laughs> And uh, Chris and I, like with the Criterion, uh, with the Criterion episode, that was kind of based around the sale that had just happened last July. Some of the releases we picked up. For this one, we decided to, since there isn't really a sale going on or anything like that, we just kind of kind of keep a theme of talking about boutique uh, distribution companies that are taking cult movies and Hollywood classics that we love and giving them like the definitive treatment. We thought we'd do another five selections from that to kind of go over and Chris feel free if you want to go ahead and start with your five selections all right. by all means uh, so Hellraiser uh, the Scarlet Box has uh, you know Hellraiser 1, 2, and 3 and you know Arrow it's does really cool packaging great packaging look at that see. great artwork very cool it's got all it's even got a documentary. Oh, like, really? In there. Oh, it does. Yeah. That's cool. Book. Comes with a really cool book. But yeah. Wow. Nice thick book, too. Yeah. Oh, cool. Can you, can, and you probably can't read that, but it says, uh, I am in hell. Help me. It comes with, you know, comes with collector cards and a mini poster, too. So they do some really, yeah, they do some really cool shit. For sure. For sure. <laughs> I'm excited for their RoboCop edition that's coming out in uh And uh, I believe this, this edition is out of print. I don't... Last time I got on eBay, it was going for like $300. Really? So... And how much did you pay? I paid 75 Man, I should have bought it. I mean, I don't like Hell, Hellraiser 3, but I love the first two. I bought the Steelbook edition of just the first one that Harold released. <clears throat> and then you can't go wrong with, you know, Wes Craven, Hills Have Eyes. Was that his second film? After uh, Last House on the Left? I believe so, yeah. It's a nice packaging, too. Yeah, it comes with, you know, collector's book, too. Let me see Tells some. you about the, you know, production of the film. It's got pictures. and. Oh, I didn't know that was Paul Shipper. Did they, they also commission artwork. This is Paul Shipper. He's the new Drew Struzan. And if you know anything about film poster art, you know the name Drew Struzan. You should get to know Paul Shipper because Struzan is retired. This guy's the new... The new he in the same vein like right. that's brilliant artwork man it's beautiful but and uh, that's not out of print that version is it uh, I'm not sure but you know it comes with a comes with a poster too. oh wow so. I haven't seen this yet so this is cool I've seen the movie I just haven't seen this uh, they're releasing actually Arrow's releasing The Hills Have Eyes too it's getting in next week. Oh, it's nice. Getting, it's getting the same. 85, 1985 sequel by, yep, Paul so. Shipper. Uh, so that's the 85 sequel by uh, Wes Craven. Right. Here's the poster if you want to. Yeah, they do some really, really cool stuff. I can't believe I bought the. The only reason why I bought the Waterworld is <laughs> because it was so cheap. <laughs> Oh, Everyone else was charging like 50 bucks for it, and I ended up getting it for like 25 uh, House House 1 and 2. The UK actually has House 1, 2, 3, and 4, the UK uh, edition, which I don't know. They do American. When they release stuff in America, they do different stuff, which is sometimes well, think, it's better and sometimes it's not. But Well, it's because House 3 in, in the UK, it's called House 3, the horror show. In the US, it was just released as the horror show. And Scream Factory, actually, but, as I was informed, has that. But, you know, see, it talks about it in this book. It's just, I don't know why they didn't, you know. I mean, they, it's really cool, really cool stuff. But, um, I love House, but, you know, as much as I love House, is, is it weird that I love House 2 even more? It's cheesier. I, I, I disagree with you on that it's one. I mean, goofier. I'm not, I'm not a big, I like it, but I'm just not 
big fan of it. It's I, nice. For some reason, I just love it. It's more of a horror... Com- I mean, they're both horror comedies. But, right. Yeah. But it's definitely more of a comedy than a... Plus, John Ratzenberger, you know, from, from Cliff Clavin from Cheers right. as the uh, uh, plumber who understands all the magical happenings that are going on and doesn't seem to be phased by it one bit. I just thought that was so cool. Well, Richard Mole, you know, <laughs> his, his Vietnam buddy, you know, whatever. Well, in the first one, it's got uh, George Wint, you know, uh, uh, Cliff Clavin's buddy, Norm Peterson on, on Cheers. I was a fan of Cheers back in the day, so that made me happy. And I have yet to see these, but didn't you mention that these Tarantino was a fan of these movies? Yeah, so Female Prisoners for series uh trilogy but it's got uh maiko is it yeah maiko Ka- kaiji who's in lady snowblood got you know that was a, for that. and that was a big influence on kill bill you know tarantino's a huge fan of that movie and if you haven't seen lady snowblood you you, you gotta check see it. it out you know you can see the similarities he used a lot of like blood spraying <laughs> got that from lady snowblood for sure but well isn't isn't oren Ishi- essentially visually based on yeah. Lady oh, yeah. Snowblood. For sure. And uh, and I also loved uh, the, the Criterion released the Lady Snowblood collection that has both of the movies in there, which I thought was this, really cool. You know, this came with a really cool poster, too. So, mini poster. Oh, nice. It's like the original Japanese poster. Yeah. That's cool. So, nice. It's got a two-sided... I might have to pick that up. I still see that around, so I know it's not out of print. Yeah, these are these are really cool. I there was another there was another box set I picked up. It's called the Stray Cat box set. It's got her. It's like a bunch of movies that she did too. Okay. But I was with you when you got that one, man. Yeah, and then uh, of course Donnie Darko. You guys all know Donnie Darko. If you don't, you should. Yeah, but it's got you know the director's cut and theatrical. In a book. And about a book. the production. And everything. So. Richard Kelly's best film. I mean, I haven't really liked I mean, the box was okay. Uh, Southland Tales was not very good. It was way too muddled, I, I thought. So, yeah. like, I think this is his best film right here. But, yeah, I mean, Arrow does some really cool packaging. They, you know, if you do the artwork, you know, it's, I don't know, I'm just, I love it. Huge fan of it. So. This packaging right here is very similar to what they did for... Guillermo del Toro's Crimson Peak, which I picked up because I love that movie, and Waterworld, you know, where it comes with the multiple editions, the book. It's a really cool package design. I almost brought the Crimson Peak one. That's a tough one because I love that movie. Yeah, I almost, I actually almost brought that, bought that one too. Brought that one, but yeah. Brought it, bought it, whatever. Yeah, whatever. I, <laughs> I have it. It's at home, but I didn't bring it with me. I almost did too, but I decided to go with a little bit more because I figured Chris here would probably go with some more of the cultier stuff. I figured I'd go with some of the more mainstream titles that they've released, like this uh, this edition of Twelve Monkeys, uh, which is one of my favorite Terry Gilliam films. Oh, yeah, and I cool. love this alter- alternate artwork by Gary Pullen, who also did uh, the artwork for um, Dark Man, Sam Raimi's Dark Man for the Scream Factory. It's, Scream, by the way, Scream Factory is another boutique uh, distribution company that we'll be talking about in a later episode because that's kind of what really I think got you and I into the, I mean we were aware of the Criterion we had Criterion DVDs but it's like when the Scream Factory started rolling out these boutique editions with alternate artwork and basically the definitive ed- definitive editions like all the special features you could ever want and then it was like what's this company Arrow and you know what I mean uh, so for me anyways that was the launching point of these but this is a really good, uh, what is this, 4K remaster? Yep, 4K remaster. Yeah, it's got loads of special features. <clears throat> Arrow remasters all of them. They, are, they they look really good. Criterion and Scream Factory usually do, too. Yeah, they, I don't think Blue Underground does, though. No. Their I, Django doesn't look nearly as good as the Arrow. And I don't know if the, I don't know if Severin or... Vinegar Syndrome. Vinegar Syndrome does. Either. They might, I don't... KL Studio Classics do for sure, yeah. and all of films too. See, these are other companies we're going to eventually get around to talking. But this, I mean, if you love Twelve Monkeys and you you're like me and you got to own it, this is the version to own. Forget the TV show. I mean, just I shouldn't have even mentioned it because now you, you've heard about it and you should just totally forget it. You should have it cleaned and burned because I'd say if you you know lose it, but then you might find it again. This is it. This is all you need as far as Twelve Monkeys go. Yeah, that was. Is that 95? It came out in 95. 95. Yeah. 
I loved it. I saw it in the theater a couple of times, man. The whole opening credit sequence with the music and everything just right. was very striking. And I, I, I had to go with A Fish Called Wanda. Oh, you can't go wrong with that. You cannot that go is, wrong with that. That movie is gold right there, dude. It is. Uh, um, so it was written by John Cleese and Michael Palin from Monty Python. They're both in the film. Kevin Klein, Jamie Lee Curtis. One of the best comedies of the 80s. A British classic. There was a subpar sequel to it in the mid-90s called Fierce Creatures, oh. uh, which I don't even think Arrow will... will Maybe they, if, you know what? If they did release a version of it, I'd probably buy it just to go yeah. with this. It's not necessarily a sequel, but it's the same cast, same writers, same director, all kind of reuniting. But this is this is definitely a classic comedy. Uh, it was a big hit back in the day, uh, and I think you should, if you haven't seen it, you should check it out. This is a really good 4K scan. Um, I I don't think any of these come with the posters as much as they. They come with booklets like the Criterion Edition, so you kind of get like a little booklet on the production. Uh, it's got um, the original poster right there. It's got, uh, you know, film reviews and things like that. Um, it's really cool. Usually the posters they reserve for the box sets. Um, but what's cool is like, like the Scream Factory, um, they do reversible cover art. So it's got newly commissioned artwork and this artwork was by i'm not familiar with this person but it was uh jc uh, but then they've got the original artwork on the reverse uh, side and of course those box sets uh, they pr i don't know does the does the uh female prisoner one uh have the original artwork on the flip side or is it uh it might i i don't know i don't remember let's check it out but, you know we got time guys we got time, time. Oh, okay, yeah. So it does look like it has the original artwork oh, yeah, on the other does. side. Yep. So it looks like any of the, the ones that are kind of standard Blu-ray release, you should show that real quick if you can. So any of their standard uh, kind of plastic case releases with the slip sleeve will have the reversible artwork and newly commissioned art, which is fantastic. And they tell you, just like Scream Factory and Criterion, they'll tell you who the art is by. Um... And then one of my favorite films, and this is one of my favorite John Frankenheimer movies. If you've ever seen Seconds or The Manchurian Candidate, you know he's a solid filmmaker. Black Sunday. Black Sunday, Ronan, with Robert De Niro, 1998. Saw this in the theater a few times. This is a brilliant 4K scan. I'm not familiar with this art collective. They're called the Oink Creative, but I love this poster art. Like, I think it's better than the actual theatrical art of De Niro just holding the gun, and which is great. But, I mean, look at how cool this is. I don't know if you've ever seen Ronan, but you should. Um, it's got, I mean, Robert De Niro, Jean Reno, Nastasha McKellen, uh, Stellan Skarsgård, Sean Bean, and Jonathan Price. Like, you can't go wrong with this. And, of course, Sean Bean's in it, so you know he's going to die. But guess what? He doesn't. Or does he? Or does he? I don't know. I'm not going to tell you. Watch it. Ronan, damn good movie. And I love it when they put the slip sleeves on there. See, their case is very similar to the Criterion in that, um, you know, it's the thick plastic. Only Criterions go all the way to the top. And Indicator from Powerhouse Studios. They take up the entire... This still has the, you know, Blu-ray uh, logo on there. But it doesn't matter because it, it has a nice consistency. They all have the similar, like with the Criterion, with a lot of these boutiques... They have their similar, like, consistent art logos on there, which I think are fantastic. I had to go... Here's my one cult pick out of this, and I don't even know how culty it is because it used to be on HBO all the time in the 80s. Oh, it is. That's, that movie's great. Vamp. Vamp with uh, Grace Jones Grace from Jones. A View to a Kill and, you and, know... If, and if, Long Duck Dong's in it. Long Duck Dong from 16 Candles. Uh, it, it, what's his name? Um... Uh, Getty Watanabe, you know, is actually from Ogden, Utah. Yeah, I know. I know. That's, That's so right. crazy. That That's... Um, but it's also got Chris Makepeace from My Bodyguard, you know, that 80s uh, movie. I don't really... Uh, Robert Russler from uh, Weird Science. Yeah. And uh, um, he was... Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Nightmare right? on Elm Street 2. Yeah. And yeah, he was right. also on the first season of Babylon 5. Who knew? But yeah, Vamp. And this well, is... He's in Weird Science too, isn't he? Yeah, did I not mention Weird Science? I don't think so. I, thought, I don't know. Maybe he did. He's also in this movie. With He's Robert Downey Jr.'s best buddy. Yeah. But this right here, the artwork was by Twins of Evil, and they've done a lot of artwork for the Criterion. They did uh, Psychomania, 
they did uh, Ken Russell's Crimes of Passion, which is a very bizarre movie oh, with Kathleen Russ. Turner, yeah. Annie Potts, and Ken Anthony Russell. Perkins. Dude, Ken, Ken Russell, Russell, man. See, and a lot of his movies uh, from the All 80s got, uh, got boutique re- releases like... Uh, I'm not sure if... Yeah. Altered States is a standard Warner Brothers. I think yeah, I don't know I if it's, it's on Blu-ray. I know it's on so. DVD because yeah. I have the DVD. But his uh, I, his I have the VHS Warner Brothers. Yeah, clamshell. Clamshell. Yeah. I have that too. Mm-hmm. No, not clamshell. It's the paper, right? Or the cardboard. No, mine's the, Here's the a old school like Warner Brothers clamshells. You remember those? Yeah. Yeah, I have that still. Dude, no, mine's one of those old paper. You know how the DVDs Warner Brothers had the cardboard? Oh right. Yeah, so right. that's what one of mine yeah. is. Uh, Ken Russell's uh, Gothic and Lair of the White Worm f- both got uh, Vestron releases. That's another one we'll talk about, too, because half the Vestron releases are, weren't actually Vestron movies. So that's another story. And last last but not least, oh, and this yeah. is a fairly new one. It came out, what, two Ju- months ago? July. July? Yeah. Weird Science. You can't go wrong with John Hughes's Weird Science. Nope. Endlessly quotable, always rewatchable, brilliant hilarious i haven't even opened this up yet chet. I, I haven't watched this yet because i don't need to i know this movie inside and out chet yeah chet's probably got to be one of the best characters ever written so chet by by the late great bill paxton who yeah. i miss i love that man he's in streets of fire he's in he made he's the whole reason why i was like titanic sure i'll see it it's his what fourth movie with james cameron he's the punk well he's the punk rocker in the beginning of terminator, terminator. Gets exactly heart, gets his heart pulled out near dark Near Aliens. Dark, dude. I love Bill Paxton, Near Agents of Shield, so Twister. Like he's such a predator too. Such an amazing actor, and I, it's so sad that he's gone because he just he just made my life so much richer. And his character Chet, and I think uh, uh, Robert Picardo's character, the cowboy from Inner Space. I've been talking about this for like 25 years. Those two should have been in a movie together as those characters, Chet and the Cowboy. Because the Robert Picardo in Inner Space as the Cowboy and Bill Paxton as Chet in this. Brilliant, man. Brilliant performances. Um, Kelly LeBrock. Of course, you've got your uh, pre-buffed out uh, Anthony Michael Hall when he was still... You know, Vacation 16... Or not 16 Candles, Vacation Breakfast Club. Uh, no, he's in Sixteen Candles. Yeah, yeah. So his pre pre Johnny so, B. Good, so what, Edward can- Scissorhands. I mean, Sixteen Candles was eighty four. Breakfast Club was eighty five. Weird Science was eighty five, and so, Vacation was eighty two or eighty three. Right. So I mean, he was like, yeah, doing a movie almost every year. And then he uh-huh. and then he buffed out and became the Jock Boy and Johnny <laughs> B. Good and never went back because he's the Jock villain and. Uh, Edward Scissorhands. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then, of course, you know, he was in the Dead Zone TV series and then The Dark Knight. And, yeah, I, I like Anthony Michael Hall's popped up on Community. But this was back in his golden era, uh, John Hughes's golden era. This was pre-Home Alone, pre-Curly Sue days of John Hughes. So, And this is the Steelbook edition. You said you had this, but you didn't get the Steelbook? Yeah, mine's got the slip. Slip sleeve. Yours probably has a book in it. This does not. That's the one drawback of getting the steel book from Arrows is they do not include the books. And those books, I actually kind of regret getting this just for that. I love, you know, getting all that information. You could probably get it on IMDb or, or on Wikipedia, but it doesn't matter. It's nice to just have. Um, so, yeah. And they actually just use the, uh, because it's a steel book, they just use the original poster art. So there's no alternate artwork here, but again, my, 4K scan. Yeah, the one I have, the slip sleeve has alternate. It's alternate artwork on it. See, this does not include any episodes from the TV series. When I had it on DVD, it included the first episode of the TV series. And the only thing that was noteworthy about the TV series is it has the gal that's playing Lisa was the gal from Kingpin, the Ferrelli Brothers movie. Yeah. Yeah. But other than that, eh, you're not missing anything. But so worth picking up. But, you know, they are... They're very cool, but they are kind of pricey. Just like Criterion's. So. Especially the collection ones, man. Yeah. They can be very, very pricey. Word. That's the one difference between them and, say... Because Vestron's pricey. But, you know, Kino, Lorber, Scream Factory, Shout Select, they're a lot more affordable, I feel like. Yeah. You know? But I don't necessarily think that they put as much effort into... 
stuffing it like with books and posters and those kind of right. things. But other than that, and what's in really interesting too is a lot of the artwork for a lot of these boutique releases, Criterion, Arrow, Scream Factory, Shout Select, Shout Factory even, uh, Kino Lorber, Vinegar Syndrome, um, Vestron Video, they have a lot of the same artists going back and forth between these companies. Is Synapse, is Synapse doing it? Synapse, uh, yeah, they do alternate. Yeah, they've had some of the people. I'm trying to think. Well, like the dude designs, he's done stuff for both Scream Factory and um, uh, Arrow. You know, like he did They Live and uh, for Scream Factory and Obsession for Arrow. Gary Pullen, um, uh, Paul Shipper. Because uh, he did Waterworld for for Arrow, but he did like Bill and Ted's uh, most excellent collection for Shout Select, and he did like Buckaroo Bonsai for Shout Select, but he also did Mad Max and Escape from New York for Scream Factory. So it's kind of kind of all over the place. Uh, so I get a kick out of that. Like it's kind of fun to look at these and go, "Hey, I know that artist," you know. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I I I from what I understand. One day out of the year, that retailer with the initials B and N does like a secret, we're not announcing it, Arrow sale, oh, which is like the Criterion sale where it's 50% off. But here's the problem with that retailer is where they have a huge selection of Criterion where you can spend hours trying to decide how much money you want to spend, which titles you want to put back, and which you want to keep, which for me is like deciding which it's like sophie's choice moment right you're like i don't want to put these back i want them all well it's like well yeah because they had a children of the corn and it was like yeah 50 percent off yeah like, yeah i'll buy it so i bought that's it. what i did too i <laughs> thought you didn't i thought you were like i can't buy that movie well it was 50 percent off, off. Dude, so, hey. so instead of 50 bucks it was 25 <laughs> plus your 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 discount there but I think it ended up being like 17. So, 17, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the problem is, is their selection of these particular titles is not nearly as vast as their criterion. So even at that sale, I'd probably only be walking out with two or three movies. But, hey, I got Dillinger 50% off, too. The John Milius film. Yeah, I have that one. Yeah. It's a good one. Uh, sure. the, the same guy, I'm trying to think of his name, but the same guy who did the artwork for that, for Dillinger, also did the artwork for the Criterion's Night of the Living Dead. Okay. Which is really cool. So, yeah, I'm a big fan. I love these. And, and what I'd like to know is, are you guys fans? Tell us. Yes. Let us know if you like, like these boutiques. Subscribe. Let us know. Please. Exactly. So we hope you enjoy help, listening to us rant about this. Help a, help a brother out. Help yeah. a couple of brothers out. Yes. We need your support. And if I swear, if you communicate with us, I will drink a few beers and I will communicate back. <laughs> and I will tell you, Everything you want to know, if you have any questions about this stuff, we can point you in the right direction. We are we are cinephiles. We're fans of cult movies and Hollywood movies and classic movies and you know B-movies. Because it was born in the Rockies. <laughs> <laughs> what he said. So uh, on that note, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Yes. The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. <laughs>